All right, you guys, I thought what we would do today is do number 328. This is out of the Hibbler book, the Mechanics of Materials book, and that's the 10th edition. And what this one is, is it's going to be related to the axial load material. And it tells us that we've got the elastic portion of a stress strain diagram for an aluminum alloy shown right here. So notice we've got the normal stress and then we've got the epsilon here, so the strain. Um, and uh, the specimen from which it was obtained has an original diameter of 12.7 millimeters. So let's write that down. I'm just going to put a little D0 here is 12.7 millimeters and then it's got a gauge length of 50.8 millimeters so that's going to be like our original length of the specimen okay so now we've got that then it says if a load of p equals 60 kilonewtons is applied to the specimen we want to find its new diameter and length okay and then it tells us that new or the poisson's ratio is going to be 0.35 all right so before we get started, let's look at what's happening here. So let's say we've got aluminum alloy, looks like this, right? This is a specimen. And we are going to apply a load of 60 kilonewtons. All right, so let's just say the load is applied like this. So let's think about what's gonna happen here. So if we apply a load like this, it's trying to stretch this out, right? So it'll try to get longer, and then if it gets longer, what happens to the diameter? Assuming this is a cylinder. Well, the diameter is going to shrink, right? Because it's getting thinner as we elongate it. Okay, so we want to relate all of that stuff together. And we're going to be able to do that through this number right here, the 0.35. All right, so remember when we have this ratio here, the equation that goes with that is that nu is negative of the lateral strain over whoops, the longitudinal strain. That's an O there. Okay, so we got lateral longitudinal. Now remember this direction here is the longitudinal direction. And then when we're talking about lateral, I'm talking about that direction there. So like the radius or the diameter, right, of the cross-sectional circular area. That's the lateral direction. So it's important to know which is which, okay? So longitudinal is along the length of the specimen. Lateral will be across the specimen. Okay, so important to realize that. Okay, so what we want to do first is let's see what all we have. I know we have this force of 60 kilonewtons, all right? Notice that is in that longitudinal direction, right? So let's start with that direction first. Okay, so I've got a force and I need somehow to relate it to the change in length. So let's see how we can do that. First, let's go ahead and find the stress that is brought about by the 60 kilonewtons here. So we know the normal stress is going to be P over A. All right, now P is just the force, so that's going to be 60. All right, so we have 60 kilonewtons, and I want to convert that over um, to newtons. So we'll have 1,000 for our conversion, right? So it's newtons per kilonewton. And then we want to divide this by the area. So this is going to be the cross-sectional area. So if I were to section this right here, it would be that area that you see. So basically it's a circular area right here. And it tells us our original diameter is 12.7 millimeters, okay? So we can use that and... Um, to get our area, we just do pi times 0 0.0127, and that's in meters, right? And I want this in meters because I'm switching this to newtons up here. And this was diameter, so make it radius, divide by 2, and then square. Okay, and then once we do our units, those two cancel. We're left with newtons per meter squared, which gives us Pascal. 
and we get 4.736 times 10 to the 8th Pascal. Okay, so now we've got that normal stress. Okay, and remember that's in the longitudinal direction. So now I need to relate this stress to my change in the length in that longitudinal direction. And remember, this is the elastic part of the curve, right? And that's important because when we are in that elastic part of the curve, we can use Hooke's Law to relate our stress to the strain, right? So we can have sigma equals capital E, that's that modulus of elasticity, times that longitudinal strain. All right, so epsilon long. So this will allow us to relate um, our change in length to our stress that was brought about by the 60 kilonewton force. Okay, now before we can use this, I've got this sigma. I don't have E yet though, and I don't have epsilon. So let's find E. Now can y'all think of how to do that? All right, remember, if you don't remember, the slope of this elastic curve here on this uh, stress strain diagram, that slope right here gives you E. All right, so slope gives, that's supposed to be an E there. Slope gives E. So we want rise over run. Okay, so again, this is from the plot. We want rise over run, all right? So rise is going to be 490. Notice that's megapascal. I'm gonna switch that over to Pascal, so multiply by 10 to the sixth. And then we put it over run, which is 0 0.007. All right, and notice the units here. It says millimeter per millimeter. Really, epsilon is dimensionless, doesn't have units, because notice those cancel. They just always put those there so you know the units that they were working in when that value was obtained. Okay, so now we're gonna have this. Um, and so we'll have seven times 10 to the power of 10. All right, and that'll be our E. So now we've got this and check that one off now. Now we're left with this epsilon. So remember this epsilon, this gives you a way to calculate a change in length. Okay, so that's what we'll be able to do here. So let's solve for epsilon long, and that's gonna be sigma over E, just from this equation. We know sigma was right here. All right, we got that. And then E is right here. So seven times 10 to the 10. Um, and now we've got that. So we can go ahead here and if you notice, I've got units of Pascal up here. So we can put that here and those will cancel. All right, I forgot that part a minute ago. Okay, so that cancels out. We're unitless, which we should be with epsilon. And then we can go ahead and calculate this. So 0 0.006271. Okay, so that's our longitudinal strain. So that tells you, a, gives you an idea of the strain in that vertical direction. Okay, so now what we're looking for, remember, is we wanna find new diameter and new length after that 60 kilonewton load has been applied. Okay, so we can use this to get the new length. And the way we're gonna do that is by remembering that longitudinal strain is going to be the new length L prime minus the original length over the original length. Okay, so now I've got all of these values except for L prime, which is our new length, which is what we're looking for. Okay, so let's set um, 0 0.006271 equal to L prime minus the original length which um, is the 50.8 millimeters, right? And let's see. 
I'm just going to leave this in. I was going to make it zero point, but let's just make it 50.8 millimeters here. Okay, this one's unitless, remember. So now we've got that, and um, we can put that over L0. Okay, so now we just need to solve for L prime, right? So if we do that, L prime then will be 50 times this, so 50.8 times 0 0.006271, whoops. And then we're going to move this over to the left, so it's going to switch it to positive 50.8 millimeters. Okay, and then with that, we'll get that L prime is 51.1186 millimeters. All right, so this is our new length. Okay, so we added that 60 kilonewton load and then it's going to lengthen it to this new length right here. So 51.1186. All right, and we were able to find that by recognizing, first of all, that this is the elastic part of the curve right so if it's elastic we can use Hooke's law once we go beyond the elastic portion of that curve you can't use this law anymore so if you're in the plastic region you can't use this law anymore all right so keep that in mind so we use that fact and then we also use the fact that um, the slope of this line right here gives us e so that was important to realize that and then and just a second, we're going to use this ratio to help us with the lateral direction. So now let's look at that lateral direction. All right, now remember the lateral direction deals with the diameter or the radius. All right, now we don't have a force in the lateral direction, right? I don't have a force here. I just have a force in the longitudinal direction. So I can't do the same method that I used up here. I can't find this stress and go about this same method. So we got to do something else. And that's where this right here comes in. Poisson's ratio, it's 0.35. Remember, it's negative lateral strain over longitudinal strain. Okay, so this one relates the change in the longitudinal length to the change in the radius or the diameter. Okay, so let's write that one down. So 0.35 is going to be equal to the negative lateral strain over longitudinal strain. And I know what the longitudinal strain is, right? I just found that up here. So we know that. So let's plug that in. So we got 0.35 equals negative lateral strain over 0 0.006271 and now let's go ahead and solve for that lateral strain. Okay, so now we're going to have negative 0 0.002195. Now what are we going to do with that? Remember we want the new diameter because as this thing is elongated, right, if this was our original we apply this load, then the new one is going to be thinner, right, and narrower. Okay, so I need to find this new diameter. So this one right here, the lateral strain, that is going to have a similar equation to this one, except for we're going to use diameter instead. So we're going to have d prime, which represents the new diameter, minus the original diameter over the original diameter. And we know the original diameter that was given was 12.7. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug those numbers in. So here is the uh, lateral strain. So we can plug that in. And then set it equal to D prime minus 12.7. Over 12.7. Okay, so now we just need to solve for d prime. So we multiply these two together right here. And then again, just like before, we're going to move this one to the left. So that's going to flip the sign. So we're going to add 
12.7. All right, so now we've got that. And then if we do that, we get D prime is 12.6721 millimeters. So that's going to be our new diameter. So notice the diameter is smaller than it was initially, and that's because we're elongating the specimen, right? Making it longer, making it skinnier. So that makes sense there. Okay, so that's how you can use Poisson's ratio along with Hooke's law to find a change in length or a change in diameter. All right, hopefully y'all found that helpful, and I will see y'all next time for another example.